Our theme this month is Feed Your Penis. Oh, what's up? What do you think it is? Oh, kissy. Hey, everyone. It's Jake. This is an impromptu video, not planned. Just got home from uh, work and doing chores, and my hair is all weird. And what is this? What even is this that I'm wearing? There's no time. So in my last video, I went through an entire episode of JW Broadcasting and kind of every episode of JW Broadcasting from front to back. And in this episode, I wanted to do something a bit more true to myself, which is relentless nitpicking. I pulled up the broadcast, was just clicking around and landed on this stretch that I watched. And I, I don't know why, but it really kind of made me wound up a little bit, and I think we should watch it and talk about it. So instead of talking about the entire broadcast, I want to talk about one tiny sliver of one segment of one broadcast, the March 2024 episode of JW Broadcasting. The full broadcast is 54 minutes, and the segment that I'm going to focus on is 90 seconds. Nine zero. Here's the whole video in my timeline, in my video editor, and here's the one tiny segment that I'm going to be talking about, just for scale reference. Unprecedented scale. Anyway, I just want to talk a lot about this one segment. That's it. That's the video. It doesn't really matter what the topic of his sermon is, this talk, because the talk always serves the same purpose no matter what the subject is. Watch my last video to find out. But I believe it is on hope. Our theme this month is Feed Your Hope. Penis is essential for peace. So he's talking about hope and how we can have hope in, in the prophecies of the Bible and all that stuff. So how did Jesus feed their penis? First, by showing them that they were right to hope in the fulfillment of the scriptures. And then by teaching them how those scriptures had been fulfilled. Uh, but then he says some things. He starts talking about hope, how we know we can hope in Bible prophecy. The scriptures contain the promise of God, a promise of salvation. All right, and of preamble, I want to play you the entire segment that I'm going to be nitpicking. It's a minute and 30 seconds. I'm going to play it without any silly editing or goofy sound effects, just going to play a minute and 30 seconds of a broadcast. And then we're going to dig deep. We're going to dig for spiritual nitpicks. The humanitarian crises facing mankind today could make any one of us feel anxious. Experts in fields of technology, finance, and government have found it necessary to coin new words to convey the gravity of the situation. In 2023, the word polycrisis began to soar in usage. A polycrisis refers to many global threats happening at the same time. The overlapping of health emergencies, climate change wars, forced migrations, natural disasters, and economic collapse all happening simultaneously. A polycrisis could throw a person off balance spiritually. But as students of Jesus' sign of the last days, we have fully anticipated that there would be many serious problems facing mankind at the same time and on an unprecedented scale. But isn't it interesting that the world itself has seen fit to come up with an expression that adequately matches what we are going through? Whether they realize it or not, they're acknowledging that Jesus' words are being fulfilled. So rather than become eaten up by anxiety, we can find hope in these very same facts if we meditate on the fulfillment of the scriptures. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I thought that David Schaefer was like the best speaker that they had and one of the best readers that they had. And that he is dynamic in a certain way, but he's profoundly creepy, right? Yes. Like he's super creepy. This childlike manner that he has. I talked about in the video as well, this sort of infantilizing kindergarten teacher tone that Watchtower speakers use. But usually it's also very subdued and low energy. So it has this sort of hypnotic effect. And David Schaefer does have the kindergarten teacher energy, but like the 25 year old kindergarten teacher energy, but he's not. He's a creepy old man with a, with a face that, you know, we don't body shame on this show, there's no need to talk about anything about his face. Yes. Yeah. 
does. He does this, like these big, really practiced and insincere smiles and this kind of almost Count olaf -y thing he does with his fingers, just tapping his fingers together. It's super yeah, villainous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so his whole vibe is kind of annoying me, uh, which I get, I'm i giving his context because maybe I'm being unfair to what he's saying, but there just is something about the way he's talking that's really hitting my ear wrong. Experts in fields of technology, finance, and government have found it necessary to coin new words to convey the gravity of the situation. Wow, okay, so experts, experts in all these fields. They're experts, experts, Bob! All these vague fields. Is he gonna cite who any of these experts are? Is he even gonna give like a specific field? Experts in fields of technology, finance, and government. They're experts, experts! Technology, finance, and government. Yes, I work in the field of government. Which could mean anything from giving the State of the Union address to the guy who uh, runs the poll worker training. A poly crisis could throw a person off balance, spiritually. And a poly whirl can throw you off balance, literally. My polywag just evolved into a poly- Crisis. So right off the bat, this is a weird point that he's making. His very roundabout idea that he's getting across is that world conditions are so bad, which of course implies the fulfillment of Bible prophecy, that all these experts in various fields have had to come together to make new words to describe these new crises. Crises. So he's framing the word polycrisis as if it is one of these new words that has been invented to describe the uniquely terrible times in which we live. But after introducing the concept of all oh, things are so bad, experts in various fields have had to form new words Experts have found it necessary to coin new words to convey the gravity of the situation. He then says, in the year 2023, the word polycrisis soared to usage. Gravity of the situation. In 2020, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Three, the word polycrisis began to soar Four, in usage. So, of course, I did what you probably did, uh, and I just googled the word polycrisis. It says it was originally coined by French theorist Edgar Morin to the various crises in economics, politics, geopolitics, and the environment which are feeding into each other, exacerbating already difficult circumstances. So yeah, more or less the definition that David Schaefer gave was correct. But who is this guy? Well, if you scroll down a little, uh, it was, this word was coined in the 1970s, says the World Economic Forum. Oh, God, the conspiracy people are going to be back. According to the 1970s, polycrisis has been popularized by the historian Adam Tooze. It was coined in the 70s to describe all of the various crises occurring in that time. Because, of course, every generation has their own challenge to deal with. Not challenge. Challenge is like a, what would you call it? A poly crisis. So that part's weird, but I wouldn't be making the video if I just thought that that was weird. What's weird is how he continues on this uh, fruitless path. A poly crisis could throw a person off balance spiritually. But as students of the sign of the last days, we have fully anticipated that there would be many serious problems facing mankind at the same time and on an unprecedented scale. It's funny that he's talking about oh, a poly crisis could throw a person off spiritually. Yeah, everyone is thrown off balance. Everyone in the whole world because it's a poly crisis. But okay, probably the most important thing is an individual Jehovah's Witnesses regularity in the field ministry and showing up to meetings and going to LDC projects and doing the hall cleaning and, you know, being visible in the congregation. That's also, you know, that situation can be thrown out of whack with a poly whirl. But as students of Jesus' sign of the last days, we have fully anticipated. So this is obviously the whole point. We knew this. We predicted it. Jesus predicted that this would be the case. And Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, have been proclaiming this. One of the times that they famously were proclaiming the near end of the world was in 1975, as a matter of fact, when uh, that's the, the decade I recently learned um, 
when the term polycule was coined crisis also the things that david schaefer says like lists as as evidence are super vague we have fully anticipated that there would be many serious problems facing mankind at the same time and on an unprecedented scale he says a lot of different things would be happening all at the same time. Oh, the Bible predicted that at some point a lot of different stuff would be going on at the same time. And it all a bunch of bad stuff and it would make things hard. And like, yeah, that's why he preached it because he thought it was going to happen in his day. And it's why the first century Christians thought it was going to happen in their day. And now we're in the year of our Lord, 2024. Unbelievable. In this year of in our Lord, 2024. It's and they're still bragging about how they knew, they knew all along that things would be super terrible. We have fully anticipated that there would be many serious problems. Well, you know, there were witnesses who died in 1975 who just thought like, oh man, I just missed the cutoff for... Armageddon. Well, see you in 1976. Ha ha ha. No, they're, they're still waiting. There were people who didn't go to college, who forgo, for, <laughs> forgoed, forwent. They decided not to have children because they were going to wait until the new system. I mean, it was coming any day. I never imagined I would be this old in this system of things. Oh, how I remember the days of my youth. The experts were vague. There were vague experts in various fields. Experts, Bob! Saying that they needed new words for the things. And wouldn't you know it, the Bible predicted that there would be things. A lot of things at the same time, even. And then he makes the smuggest look of all time. I know, glass houses and all that. But isn't it interesting that the world itself has seen fit to come up with an expression that adequately matches what we are going through? Whether they realize it or not, they're acknowledging that Jesus' words are being fulfilled. The world itself has seen fit to come up with a word that, whether they know it or not, happens to describe the exact conditions that the Bible foretells. Now, of course, they're not exact conditions because, as we've just established, he doesn't say anything specific. Many serious problems. The world, the world came up with this term. The world itself has seen fit to come up with an expression. The world is not acknowledging that Jesus' words are being fulfilled by coming together and creating the word polycrisis. That's not what's happening. There's, this is a new segment that I'm going to start doing on the show called That's Not What's Happening. Friends, David, that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. The world is not getting together and creating a word. They are not unwittingly acknowledging that the word that they invented lines with Bible prophecy, which it doesn't really. Like it does in the sense that, yes, wars and pestilences and hunger are, are happening, but that's always been happening. That's why every generation thinks that the Armageddon is coming in their time. Everybody thinks that it's happening, but it never is. The world saw fit to come up with a term like, no. Yes. No. It was coined by some French guy in the 70s. The world didn't come up with it. A guy wrote it in a book, and then it, a historian noticed it in 2023, and then it caught on because of the World Economic Forum or whatever I vaguely glanced at at Google on Google. The point is, the world did not come together. But no Jehovah's Witness is going to think twice about that because cults are us v. them. And there's also a lot of projection. Cult leaders use a lot of manipulation tactics in their literature. So that's what they accuse the world the them of doing. They, the faithful and discreet slave, publish half-assed, poorly researched reports with a lot of misinformation in their in their crappy magazines. They use lies and half-truths to make weaselly statements. And of course, sometimes they just lie. So that's what they accuse the world of doing. Now, do some people in the world do that? Do some media outlets do that? Absolutely. But it's not like the world comes together and says, hey, all right, everybody, we're going to need a new word. 
to get out there in this year of our Lord, 1970. But he can get away with that because Jehovah's Witnesses have to operate as a hive mind, as a collective. You have to follow the leader. So that's how they assume the world operates. They assume that the world operates basically because Satan has his ideas and it trickles from Satan down and everybody just has to do what Satan says, the way that Jehovah's Witnesses have to follow the governing body. I think that's how in their mind they justify the world being one thing, when of course the world is many different little things. And this is just like one little tangent that he goes on. But it's nonsense. Like every word of it is complete nonsense. A polycrisis. He doesn't make a point at all. The world itself has seen fit to come up with an expression. It's hard to even discern what point he's trying to make. They're acknowledging that Jesus' words are being fulfilled. Okay. The other big reason why I wanted to make this is that little, he kind of like, kind of settles in. He's a, little, he's a little pleased with himself. I've done it. I understand. You're a man who's on camera and you realize like, oh, that's going to play. That's going to play to the audience. I don't think this played, to be honest. The stronger our penis is, the stronger our erection will be. Because faith is day.